Hey guys, welcome to the Q&A video. For the last couple weeks, we've had a channel on the Discord where you could ask questions and I told you I'd put in a video for YouTube. So this is that video. Welcome uh, and thanks for the questions. This is Jana, my wife. Hello. If you don't know her already or Mrs. Kindred. And she's gonna ask the questions and in the end, there's a couple for her as well. So awesome. bear with us. We'll get started. Uh, first question comes from Mosty Toasty. What was the first thing you made for Swords and Magic and stuff that made you say, wow, this is a game? So when I first started the game, I, I initially just wanted to make a character model that I could run around the world and fight things with. So once I got enemies in the game and weapons and I could like fight the enemies, it dawned on me that I actually could make a game out of it. So I'd say probably just like the first glimpse of combat. The next couple of questions come from Prestige. Okay. How does it make you feel after gaining so much traction and a big following online, and does it affect your decision making a lot? Um, I don't know. I don't think so because from the beginning I've been streaming the whole process of making the game. So I think when the game started getting traction, it just helped like kind of solidify the idea that this actually could be a game that people actually want to play. So. Does the development of Swords of Magic affect your personal life negatively or positively, positively when you are not working on it? Um, I'd say both. When I'm not working on it, I'm always talking to Jana about it. Very true. And I'm always calling her at work when I have ideas and telling her about things. So, yeah, I'd say I'd say both. I'd say it makes me a better person because I have something to wake up for, and it makes me a worse person because it has something to distract me from my family. <laughs> I suppose. Uh, will there be microtransactions or in-app purchases? Will you implement these if the game doesn't do as well as you hoped? Definitely not. No, um, there will never be any microtransactions or in-app purchases ever. I'm just not interested in that. And if the game doesn't do as well as I hoped, then there won't be enough people to buy those things anyway, and that's not going to make the game any better. So. You have always hated microtransactions. Always. That's true. Okay, next couple of questions come from Angel of Death. Angel. Do you sometimes suffer from lack of motivation to work on something? If so, how do you work through that? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, luckily for me, being a solo, and well, now a part of a, a two-man team, um, I've always had a ton of things to work on. So if I get sick of working on one thing, I'll usually just jump to something else and change it up and hopefully eventually get back to the other thing. So. Who's your favorite mod? Uh, my favorite mod is the one who's online when I need something. They're all in different time zones, so. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Uh, with so much to put in the game, how do you decide what to work on first and what takes priority over others? Um, you know, I'm not very good at this. I usually just kind of work on what I feel like working on. Um, which isn't good because sometimes there's other things that are way more important, but uh, I would say I'm, I'm now putting together a hack and plan, um, uh, like sort of like Trello, um, where you can like organize all of your, your mechanics and everything, and so that's helping me a little bit understand what's important and what's not. Alright, the next one comes from D. Drosler. I'm really bad with usernames, so sorry. Uh, what is your favorite thing about Swords of Magic so far? A mechanic, character design, a cool looking mountain, or literally anything else? I think, um, mountain. Or is that mount? This is mountain. Oh, I might have missed that. Whatever. I can just type that. Mm -hmm. Um, my favorite thing... I don't know, probably... Probably just putting, like... Probably just putting, like, secrets in the game. Like, I love knowing that there's things in the game that people haven't discovered yet, and I, I love watching people play and discover those things. So I think if it were me playing the game, that would be my favorite thing, is just knowing that any time I could turn around and turn a corner and find something new and awesome that leads into something crazy that I wasn't expecting. Yeah, I would probably say the same thing about you. All right, so next couple, oh, there's a lot, come from Arrow. Are there any artists you would say are a big inspiration to you? Mm, this one's tough. Unfortunately, there's like not a lot of you don't really know a lot about the like game artists behind games. So I have a lot of games that, that inspire me, but I don't really know any of the artists that work on them, which is too bad that I don't look those up. Um, I always liked an artist. Um, I think his name is Kikai Kotaki, I think. 
Um, he's a concept artist and his work has always inspired me, but I haven't really looked at his stuff in a long time because I've been kind of busy doing my own thing and his work really doesn't resemble Swords of Magic a lot. So not, not really, I guess, but there's a lot of game art out there that is just phenomenal and it just blows me away. So yes, there are a lot of artists that inspire me. I just can't tell you their names. Uh, do you prefer working alone or with others on projects? So I really liked working alone in Swords and Magic because I could do whatever I wanted. But at the same time, having Moz on board now uh, gives me someone to bounce ideas off of. And Other than me. yes, someone who ha who can actually affect the game. Yes. Um, and someone who understands like how difficult it is to put those things into the game. And also like knowing that he will be taking on the brunt of the programming work is a huge like like relief. I, I know that I, I have someone I can count on now. So yeah, that's great. How long do you expect to work on the game before you determine it's good enough to release? Yeah, that's that's a tough one. That's um, a very tough one. Yeah, I would say it's kind of just like a, a, a judgment of, it's kind of like just based on content and time. Um, I want to make sure there's like at least 15 hours of content when it goes into early access so players don't get bored. And that's just like straight like raw content. That's not like grinding for things or sort of collecting things. That's just playing the game and and going through quests and just like discovering things as you go. What's your favorite TV show or movie? Oh boy, that was, this one's tough. My favorite currently is, my favorite TV show currently is probably The Dragon Prince. We just, that. we might have just binged that last night, so that might be a little bit biased, but um, I love The Dragon Prince. A lot of that show inspires me. Uh, I realized last night that the one of the main characters in the show, Raylan, Raylan? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I lost, lost her name. She's a moon shadow elf. And I realized that probably after we watched the first season that I named the elves in the game moon elves. So that may have been okay. straight copied from that. <laughs> and I didn't realize it. What about a movie? Um, and movie, that one's tough. I don't know. I mean, Star Wars is like my all time favorite like movie series ever probably. Oh, but yeah, I love Star Wars. Do you enjoy reading? If so, do you have a favorite book or series? I do enjoy reading, but not until really kind of recently. Mm -hmm. um, and recently I've really gotten into graphic novels. I have a ton of graphic novels that I like reading. Um, I, I can't think of anything, in, like any one in particular I really like. There's um, have a lot of them. There's that one, I think it's called, is it called Sky? Mm -hmm. Sky, Skyward? No, Sky. Skyward. I think it is Skyward. Skyward. There's one called Skyward that I just started reading and they just came I think they just released the second one, that or I just hadn't, hadn't seen it before. And I just bought it and I haven't read it yet. But that's a great graphic novel and I like that a lot. Will there be holiday events in Swords and Magic? Probably. I don't know. Uh, next question comes from Skeever. How did you learn blueprints? Uh, Googling. I opened Unreal Engine and I started Googling how to do this, how to do that. And there's tons of, uh, uh, the, there's, some, there's tons of forums and stuff out there with those, all these questions answered. Pretty much anything you want, you want to know is, has been answered already. Just Google it. Next couple of questions come from Lim. What's the most challenging part about being an indie dev? Is there any advice you'd give to other devs just starting out? Um, I don't know. I think the, the hardest part for me has always just been continuing to keep working. Uh, like staying motivated and to work on the same project. I have quit probably close to hundreds of projects now. Um, I've just, I've always started like a project for a weekend and then quit by Monday and getting past that hump and keeping, like keep working on it, like learning to keep working on those projects is probably the hardest thing for any devs. And I would say find, start building a community right from the gate, even if it's just a couple friends to show your ideas to, and that'll keep you on track. And then when they come to you and say, oh, what, how, how are you doing on that game? Then you're gonna feel bad if you say, oh, I gave up on that project, which I did for years. I told everyone, oh, I gave up on that project for years. And eventually I got sick of saying that and I felt stupid for saying it. So don't quit, just keep going. If today you could give past kindred advice, what would it be? <laughs> um, that's a good question. I don't know because I feel like everything I've done has been kind of like stumbling through the dark and somehow I've ended up here and so I feel like I've done everything right in a, in a sense. At the same time, I know a lot of things I've done wrong, like starting the project over two, almost three times now um, has been kind of a mess, but uh, I think 
I don't know. I mean, as, as much as I'd like to say make the game smaller and cut it back, at the same time, it's like if I did cut back and I made the game this little tiny game, it probably wouldn't be as exciting for everyone right now. So I think it's doing fine. So last question from Lynn. What inspired you to start game development? Um, probably just playing video games as a kid with my brothers. Um, we, we would play video games and then most of our games were single player so we couldn't play together. And after we got done playing the games and we got sick of watching each other play, we'd usually make up our own games and run around and hit each other with sticks and stuff. <laughs> so I'd say probably just growing up with two brothers and having to keep them entertained. And also I had, I had a, couple, a, a few cousins too. Then I was the oldest so I was making up our games to play and finding things to do and going on adventures in our backyard. We lived in a small town so we had a lot of woods and stuff to explore. So I think probably just growing up in a being bored probably motivated me to get into it. The next question comes from Miley. A couple questions. Uh oh. Do you have any tips on staying focused on where'd it go? On something you're working on for such a long time? Um, I kind of already went over this a little bit earlier. Uh, I'd say I think that the big thing is just trying to trying to find ways to make it fun. Um, I I try to follow this this, uh, this technique where you work for at least five minutes a day on whatever it is. I mean, you should be taking days off too, but when you are trying to work, you should at least put five minutes in. Once you've sat down and and invested the five minutes, you're usually going to get some, like nothing done in the five minutes. But usually, that since you're already sitting there working, it'll you'll want to keep working, and you usually end up putting a couple hours in. So I think that's an important thing. As long as you can you can talk yourself into doing five minutes a day, then you can usually get a lot more like, than that done. So that's one mm -hmm. tip. Okay. Next question is going to be, what has been the high point of the journey so far? That's a good question. There's I don't know. Been a lot. There have been a lot of high points. Um, I think probably when YouTube started and the first time the devlog got picked up by the YouTube, the magic YouTube, al YouTube algorithm, that was kind of a crazy time for me. I remember watching the numbers just keep going up and keep going up and seeing all the comments and I think probably reading through like the first like mm -hmm. the first video that ended up getting like a hundred comments reading through all those comments and just like realizing that it wasn't just me and like a handful of people on Twitch that thought this game was, was going to be good it was like a lot of people like a lot of game developers too who are like mm -hmm. probably the first to judge people because they know how to make games already so it's crazy to see so many people who believe in this project and I think that was I think that was it. That's probably like the, the best time. That's when I, I realized the game was actually going to be something, so. Yeah. How do your friends and family react when you tell them you're making this game? Um, <laughs> so for the longest time, I thought that Jana actually thought I was just messing around. Um, like from the beginning, I really thought that she thought this was just me trying to make something out of nothing that was never going to work. And until recently, I didn't think she took it serious, but I guess she always has. <laughs> I have. Um, as far as the rest mm -hmm. of my family, uh, my grandparents have always been really supportive with me. Um, mm -hmm. I owe them a lot for raising me the way I've been raised, and I've always tried to make them proud. So I think that they've always been behind me about this, and my mom's been pretty supportive too. I have a really supportive family, so that's nice. But I don't think anyone ever took me serious until I started pulling in big numbers on YouTube bigger numbers on YouTube. So, um, and most times when I tell people that I make video games for a living, they will automatically assume I worked on Call of Duty. And then I have to tell them, no, I, mm -hmm. I'm not that cool yet. <laughs> um, so I don't know, it's, it's tough because, mm -hmm. I don't know, some people think it's really cool that I make video games and some people think that it's just, you know, a joke. That... Or they don't know what that means. That is true. That a lot of people, lot. yeah, a lot of Janus family don't really know what I'm talking about. We're talking about when we talk about my games. So, but yeah. that, that is what it is. People don't, they just don't know what goes behind, goes on behind the scenes. So. True. After Swords and Magic is finished, what will you work on next? Uh, everything. I don't know. I have. I think that's like the biggest problem with game developers. They always have new ideas for games, and so. I think you have a new idea every. I do. 
I minutes. had a new idea last night. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna work on next. I know if I keep working with Moz, if everything goes well, I know him and I both like the idea of making MMOs. So that could be in the future, maybe, if we make a name for ourselves and have some funding and we can actually hire a team to make an MMO, that would be awesome. Um, don't get your hopes up. That's not a for sure thing. I actually feel like maybe smaller games after this would be good for a while. So I can, you know, I don't know. I also really like making YouTube videos up now. I've been having a lot of fun doing that. So maybe just slowing down a little bit, doing some smaller projects and making some YouTube videos and maybe tutorials and stuff would be good. But yeah. I'll, I'll definitely be working on another game after this, though. Yeah. I just don't know what, which one. What kind of bear is best? That's a ridiculous question. Next. When making your art, how often do you work from reference images, and how often do you just do it from memory? I always do the reference. Oh, well, not always. So, mm -hmm. as an artist, or as, as a human being, you can't... You don't have the, the the capacity in your memory, nor does your brain work the way it needs. It would need to work to see all the details in in a piece before, like like to to do it from your mind. So if I wanted to model a keyboard, for example, um, I know what a keyboard looks like, generally speaking. But if I actually tried to sit down and model it, it would come out completely different than most keyboards. I mean, obviously I have one sitting in front of me, so it'd be really easy to look at it. But any other thing in the world, you you would never come out like you want to unless you studied that thing for hundreds of hours. So you should always be using reference because your brain just doesn't capture the details you would need to make it believable. And a player will look at those things and if you haven't used reference, they'll know there's something wrong with it. They might not know what it is, but something's gonna be off. So you should always be using reference and I use reference for almost everything. It doesn't matter what it is. I usually pull up some sort of reference, even if it's just a concept art to get an idea. All right, this one's a little bit longer. This one's from Demise. Explain your thoughts when you gave Moz two weeks to prove he could do multiplayer. Were you really hoping he could do it? Were you skeptical at all? And when you did see the build, how excited, scared, or relieved were you to bring on someone so talented as Moz? So, I always knew Moz could do it because I've been watching him stream for a long time now, which is why he's probably the only person I would have trusted handing a build, like the project over to. Um, cause I know he knows what he's doing. <clears throat> so when he asked for the project, I didn't think he was gonna do multiplayer first of all. And then when he proved that he could do, that he wanted to try and he asked for two weeks, I, I guess I just decided what, why not? Right. I have nothing. I mean, I kind of wanted to just take a break anyway at the time. Cause I was really overwhelmed and stressed with everything. So taking a two week break sounded kind of nice. So it was kind of like, whatever, let's see what you can do. Um, but yeah, I think I, I always knew he could do it. I just didn't know how well it would have been. Yeah, I didn't expect it to be that done that well. Did I answer all that? I think so. Yes. And I'm very relieved that he's on, on the team now. It's lifted a lot of weight off my shoulders and it's really nice having someone who knows what they're doing to answer the questions <laughs> and like fix things that I know were broken. So, And especially design-wise, like there's a lot of designs in the game that were really broken and having another person on the team who has a lot of experience making games and testing them, um, it really helped having him and uh, his feedback and him saying, look, this design's cool, but it's broken. Let's fix it. And then we'd fix it together. So, All right. The next two questions come from Muffin Lover. What features would you like to add to the game if you had no restrictions? Oh, okay. I also want to point out, I may have reworded some of these questions. So they make more sense in like interview format. So this is one of the ones I remember rewarding a little bit. Um, so sorry about that. But um, what features would I add if I had no restrictions? Um, too many. Yeah, way too many. I mean, the first one would have been multiplayer, but that's that's in now. Done. So yeah. Check. Um, I think another one would be some sort of like. I think it'd be really cool to have some sort of like hub world or like the city or something. If that were like an open like server, like a dedicated server, so every time you enter the city, you saw players from all like every game in that city. You obviously wouldn't be able to buy houses there and stuff, which kind of ruins that. So. Um, that wouldn't really work, but I think that'd be awesome. That'll never make it in the game, so don't hold your breath. Um, what else? Probably like flying mounts would be awesome. Um, ships, boats, airships. There's so many cool things I'd love to add to the game that are just like way above and beyond. Um, I'd love to do like some more procedural content, like procedural like NPCs and stuff like that that, you know, they like show up randomly around the world and like world like world bosses. There's it's millions of things. There's so many things, so 
Uh, how will the multiplayer work in Swords of Magic? Okay, so this is a good question because everybody asked this and I've explained this a hundred times. So I can now refer to this video, to this time. Um, how it works currently is you can host a peer-to-peer -peer game or join a peer-to-peer -peer game. Steam allows us to uh, list all lobbies that are that are public right now. So right now in the game, if you go on and click the refresh button, uh, you, that'll actually work so you don't have to press the refresh button every time. It'll list all the games that are being hosted currently peer-to-peer -peer, and you can select one and join it. Or you can host your own, which then shows up in that list. Uh, this means you don't have to run a server, we don't have to host a server on our end, and we never will host a server on our end. There will never be a, an official Swords and Magic uh, dedicated server. So you won't be able to join, it's not an MMO, so that you won't ever be able to join the official server at all. Um, but you may eventually, this is the, this is the plan, but not, it's not guaranteed yet, we would like to be able to upload a server so you guys can download and run your own private server on a, a second computer or your computer or whatever, so you can host an always up, always on server for your friends and you to play on. So that way if you play with five people or four people or whatever, and then you have to go to bed to you know get up early in the morning then they can keep playing if they want to or if you you know get on later that night or whatever you can get back on and nothing is nothing's been interrupted and no one had to be get kicked off because someone left because currently if you're hosting a game and you leave then everyone gets kicked off the game okay uh next two questions are from Rattel. i think yeah maybe yeah. sure how do you feel about the current state of the game um so Two weeks ago, I would have said it's in a great state, but right now it's kind of in a like limbo. Um, currently, we're we just had multiplayer, so things were looking great. But Moz reminded me that when I he crunched to get you know multi work multiplayer working in two weeks, a lot of like duct tape got used. So we're now replacing the duct tape with you know actual like structural supports. So the game right now is sort of being refactored a little bit to be a little sturdier and work for future things. He's also adding in um, key bindings, which has been something that we've needed for a long time, and full controller support, which it had before multiplayer, and then because of multiplayer, it kind of just got pushed aside. So we'll have full controller support and key bindings here soon, and then I think the game will be in a much better state. So it's it's it'll be much better in a couple weeks. Will we see a Swords of Magic playthrough in the future? And if so, will we see more gameplay with your daughter? Yeah, definitely. Um, Abby loves playing the game. Um, Absolutely. Jana will hopefully love playing the game one day. So I would really like to be able to do a gameplay, uh, like a just like a kindred party, like, you know, everyone, we all just go through and play the game together. And as a playthrough, I would really like to do a commentary playthrough, maybe have Jana play the game, um, like right before release or something, and I'll just like talk through it and talk about like design choices and things like that, sort of like a commentary on like a DVD you'd see or something. I think that'd be kind of fun, so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this message, or this question is from Cass. Do you like foxes? Um, yes, and there will probably, most likely, I can just about guarantee there will be foxes in the game eventually. Uh, next question is from Xeria? Sure, I think it's actually Xeria. Xeria? Sure. I'm bad at this, Whatever. I already said that. Will there be cooking in Swords of Magic? Yeah, there will definitely be cooking. Um, it'll probably be simplified cooking, it won't be like Breath of the Wild or anything. It'll work just like other crafting things, so you'll have recipes that you um, unlock excuse me, recipes you unlock, and then you will just open them up in a cooking table or something, or some, some sort of cooking apparatus, and uh, be able to put recipes together. So, and then food will give you buffs. Uh, next one's from External, or Eternal Shade. Sorry, mixing letters up. Uh, what is your favorite fantasy creature? Ooh, that one's tough. I think probably Dryads, um, which is probably why my game is probably like the one of the, well, I guess there are actually a couple other games with Dryads, but. A playable dryad race. Um, I guess Guild Wars 2 kind of did that. Um, but yeah, I think probably dryads, maybe maybe satyrs. I also really like goblins a lot. Um, I don't know. I, I'm really kind of a sucker for like the classic like monster races. I don't like the like crazy twists on things. But yeah, probably probably one of those three. Okay. Uh, next question is from Xanti. What inspired you to start working on Swords of Magic full time? Uh, my daughter. When we were pregnant, uh, I was I had a really bad job. Um, I mean, it was a good job. I just was a dangerous job, and I didn't want to work it anymore. 
and I wasn't making near as much money as Jana was at the time. Um, I still am not. <laughs> um, but I wanted to go back to school, and one of my co-workers had just started school at Full Sail um, online, and he was showing me some of his homework and asking me for some, for, some help, for some help on it. And I was like, this is actually pretty easy, and I think I could probably do this. And I was like, you know what, I kind of want to try it. And I'm not going to lie, I kind of found out I had a terrible computer at the time and really couldn't do a whole lot on it. I couldn't develop games on it, really, um, or play games on it. And I found out that if you signed up for the school, they would give you a MacBook Pro in, it, along with a graphics tablet and a scanner and so bunch many, of a bunch of cool stuff that you need as a, like a game developer. And so I kind of got excited about that and I was like, hey, that sounds great. I mean, lo and behold, I had to pay it all back anyway, so I still owe money all that stuff. And it was a lot of money, but... Anyway, so I signed up and honestly, before I knew it, I had graduated. Um, so that got me into it. And also I quit my job. I'm sorry, I kind of skipped that part, but I, I quit my job and, and did school full time while, and then Abby was born uh, sometime in, in that, within that zone. And uh, yeah, and then I started doing some freelance stuff right after school, uh, right after I graduated school. And I still had to stay home. I was a stay at home dad that whole time and I, I she just started kindergarten so at the time I was still at home with her full time um still she just pretty much preschool. Oh, I'm sorry preschool she just started preschool but it's only a few hours a day so I'm still full time dad right basically and so I just decided I'm going to start working on the swords and magic thing uh, because it started working out so yeah so I guess Abby did I guess that's what started all this definitely I can agree with that um Next one is from No One. How will the outfits created by the community be used in game? Good question. So um, currently, if you don't know about this, there's actually on the Discord there's a submit an outfit channel. Is that what it's called? Yeah. You can download this program called the Swords and Magic Outfitter Toolkit or Tool. I don't know. Something like that. And uh, it's just a skin viewer. You can spin around the model. You can change their race and their hair color, and their skin color, and their hairstyle and their face and everything. And then you can upload your or import your own texture files, your own PNG textures. And in that package, there's also uh, some UV map templates and you can use a vector program, which is what I recommend, or you can hand paint or whatever you want to do to make textures for the characters. If you make a texture, you can submit it via form in the same channel there on Discord. And if I like it, it'll go in the game. When it goes in the game, it'll probably end up in a special clothing shop in the city um, that is like a... I don't know how I'm gonna do it. It'll be some sort of like collaborative like clothing shop or something. And it'll, when you buy an outfit, it'll say who designed it. And hopefully I'll make it aware or I'll make it, um, make it known that those, all those outfits were made by uh, fans of the game. And so yeah, if you like, if you wanna try to design your own clothing, um, go there, submit an outfit uh, or download the outfitter tool, make your own texture, submit it. And then if it's cool, then it goes in the game and your name goes on it in the game. So when people buy that outfit in, in, in the game, they'll see who made it. And you'll be a part of the game. All right, uh, next couple questions are from the Stank Beats. These are names. Um, sure. What sort of age range is the game for? So I'm intending it to be kind of E for everyone, which means 10 and up. Um, though, uh, I don't know, it kind of depends. I mean, my devlogs are definitely intended for 13 and up because I'm on YouTube and so I obviously don't make content for children. Um, but I think the game is, it, when it's released, I'm kind of marketing uh, 10 and up around there. My daughter's almost five and she plays it no problem um, and loves it. Um, she won't be able to do a lot of the like puzzle content and like some of the quests might be a little bit tough for her and maybe the bosses will be a little too tough for her early on but you know playing with her family which she should be at, at that age um someone who's an adult who okayed the purchase right um they should have no problem helping her through so i think i think it's great for most people all ages um a little bit of cartoon violence probably some mischief going on there but uh, other than that i think e for everyone is where i'm targeting if it ends up being teen i understand that but i'm gonna try for e for everyone is the game divided into areas or are there zones with sub biomes? There are areas in the game um, and zone, I don't know, uh, that's tough. The, the whole world, the whole map's gonna be one island map, one whole island, there'll be ocean around the whole outside of it. Um, what that means is that there's no, there's no longer any artificial barriers. You can go anywhere you can get to on the map. Uh, it won't be that huge of a map and it can be expanded. New areas can surface or something. I can write some lore for that kind of stuff if I ever wanna add more stuff. But um, yeah, it, there will be 
there will be areas, uh, but it's, it's going to be mostly, like, to the north will be cold and mountainous and snowy, probably. And to the south will be, like, desert. So it'll just be kind of a classic, like, a map that you would expect. So it won't be like Minecraft where there's, like, desert in different spots and then, and, and, like, snow in different spots. It'll mostly just be set up on one map. The next one is from Line Z. What games do you draw inspiration from in Swords of Magic? Lots of games. Um, Fable is a really big one. Fable was a really big game that I played as a kid. I was very, very excited about that game coming out, and it was a lot of, a lot of open, like ended, doing what you want to do stuff in that game. So a lot of my inspiration has come, come straight from that. I also played a lot of WoW, uh, World of Warcraft, as a kid. So that was a big part of it. Um, like I really want a lot of the features that I enjoyed in WoW, which wasn't really leveling up or grinding or defeating bosses. It was more of the social stuff. I love all that stuff in World of Warcraft. Even some of the crafting stuff was fun. And like discovering little like nooks and crannies and around the world that, that you, like you didn't know were there and really didn't have an important part in like, like leveling up and grinding and stuff. So that's cool. Um, and I'm excited about adding those kinds of things. Um, there's, a, there's some inspiration from Minecraft, but not so much built in the game, more just like as a developer. Like Minecraft was kind of a, a like a pivotal point in like game development, I think for, or for like game design in general for game developers where I think people realize that indie games or just games in general could be more than just, you know, hack and slash or like shoot em ups. So there's a lot of stuff about Minecraft that inspired me as a game developer to try new things. Um, also, um, Animal Crossing is a big one. I played that a lot as, as, a, lot as a kid and a lot of the like clothing designs, um, that kind of stuff comes straight from Animal Crossing. Um, the digging up treasure comes from Animal Crossing, maybe a little bit of Sea of Thieves in there, uh, stuff like that, so. All right, the next one comes from Creatives. Are you on Team Cats or Team Dogs? Will they be in game? Oh, Team Dogs for sure. Yes, we are um, a dog house. But there's already a cat, a kitten model um, in, in the, the project, but not in the game. Uh, so there will be cats and dogs in the game. Be raining cats and dogs. <laughs> uh, next one comes from Master and Jason. Which aspects of Swords of Magic are you most proud of? Hmm. So, um, I don't know. I'm really proud of how the art is coming together, but I think the overall game in general is kind of what's impressed me the most, which is weird to say because I made it, but as a designer or as a developer, when you have an idea in your head, it's really, really difficult to get that out and like actually make it feel like you want it to feel. And somehow I feel like Swords and Magic feels exactly how I've always wanted it to feel, which is just crazy to me. So I think just in general, like just playing the game and exploring the world and seeing what, watching other people play it and see them like discover things and like figure stuff out and like find hidden areas and stuff that kind of, that's what I'm proud of. Th that I can, I can hide hidden areas and make it fun to find those these things and like explore in the game. So I guess it's like the game world in general is what I'm most proud of. And the fact that I somehow learned to program through blueprints uh, through this whole thing and it doesn't just always fall apart <laughs> like a little bit but it still works somehow uh what differences do you see between maz's vision for the game and yours and what about the difference differences between yours and the community that's a good question um so when maz and i first we first got on discord and talked about the game and he showed me the multiplayer and we kind of played through for a little while he was talking about how, because we were doing PvP at the time, because he didn't have AI set up yet, so we were just fighting each other, which was awesome. But he was talking about how we could put different game modes in the game, and maybe the single player experience could just be a separate thing. And I realized then that, like, we definitely did have different visions at the time, because that's not something I wanted at all. So I think I'm slowly getting him back on the right track for the game. Um, also, I know he did. He really did want to do some PvP stuff early on, and then somewhere along the way, I shifted and decided I want to do PvP stuff. Um, it, it's it's just weird because the visions for the game, like his, is a just it's not that much different than mine, but it definitely is a little different. And then we end up somehow like doing this thing where we just kind of cross back and forth, and eventually I think we're gonna end up around the same place. But it's a good thing that I like that he has a different vision for the game because it means that the like the vision for the game in general will be more broad and maybe mine's not the right vision. So with a little bit of his and a little bit of mine, I think we'll end up in, in a good spot. And as far as the community, 
This kind of scares me because I think that a lot of people watching the devlogs and watching the the game, um, following the game, I think they have in their head this grand idea. I think it's really overhyped right, over right now. A lot of people don't know what to expect. That's why a lot of people are like, oh, um, I can't wait to do like like dungeon raids and stuff. And I'm just going, dungeon raids? What are you talking about dungeon raids? <laughs> There's no dungeon raids in the game. Uh, okay, so next one is introvert or extrovert? Oh, I'm definitely an introvert. Yeah. Big time. <laughs> I know it doesn't seem like it because I can get on Twitch and talk for, you know, 10 hours, 15 hour. hours. And I'm pretty much mostly comfortable with it. If you go back to my early Twitch videos, which you can see a couple in the, like, Twitch highlight video, which is, was terribly received on YouTube compared to everything else, which is understandable. Um, but if you go back and watch some, like, the earlier clips in there, you can hear how, like, timid I am and how, like, shy. Um, I used to be really bad. I'm way better when I'm, like, on stage or, like, in front of people. Camera is, is kind of weird for me, but um, as long as there's someone watching and, and reacting to what I'm doing, I'm totally fine with it for some reason. Um, I don't know. I don't know why. I, I used to play in bands when I was younger and was up on stage a lot. Um, I did a, I did drama and stuff in high school and I was always in plays. So um, yeah, I guess I'm just, I'm okay with that kind of stuff for some reason, I guess because I feel like I'm meant to be there and that's, I'm in my element when I'm doing that. But if you put me in a party with 10 people that I don't know, I'll be the one standing in the corner. Or you'll be gone. <laughs> yeah, or I'll just leave. I can't do those, those situations. I'm very bad about that kind of stuff. I can't even like, I used to not be able to drive to the store and like go grocery shopping because I didn't want to have to talk to anyone. So it used to be much worse than it is. I'm getting out of my shell more though. Okay. Uh, next question is biggest fear. Um, so like in like career wise, it would be, I can't make games anymore. Like, I, it'll be that I have to go get a regular job again, um, a nine to five job somewhere, a, a, a gas station or something. That's my biggest fear, like career-wise. Um, as far as like life in general, it's probably like, I mean, probably just becoming like disabled so I can't create anything anymore. That's probably what it is. So I guess it's kind of the same thing, not being able to like make games or do what I want to do. That's, yeah, yeah. I think that would, that would be awful if, uh, if you, if I couldn't use like a keyboard and mouse or I couldn't like design things anymore. I think you'd find some way to do something though. Probably. Because that's I'd, what you do. Yeah, I would, I, I thrive in under limitations, so I'm sure I'd figure something out, but yeah, still, I would hate to have those sort of limitations. You would, so. you would definitely get discouraged first, but then you'd figure something out. Uh, yeah. Last one for Master Jason. Would you sell Swords of Magic for one million dollars? million dollar question. <laughs> it is a million dollar question. Um, I would, but not because I want the money, but because that money could go to a bigger project and it could go to paying Moz if he wanted to stay on the team. It would, could go to a lot of things. Not to mention that if if anybody had a million dollars to buy this game out, it would make, it would make headlines somewhere. Maybe not like, you know, it's not Minecraft being sold for billions of dollars, but it is a big, big sale and it would get some headlines and it would get a lot of attention. I wouldn't care so much about how well Swords of Magic did at that point um, if it was just a million dollar buyout. But if I was in headlines, that means that Kindred Games gets some recognition. And that means I could turn around and go to Kickstarter or something like that and start a new project, which let's face it, I have tons of ideas for new projects and I'm sure <laughs> Moz does too. So I'm sure between him and I, if we wanted to keep working together, we could start a new project and we'd have three, four, five, ten times the amount of backers and, and, and people excited about whatever the new project is, especially if it was just like an MMO or something. So I think that we could take that money and do something great with it and do something bigger and better. And it would just, yeah, I would, I would hate to lose my, my baby, you know, like Swords of Magic has been my thing for a long time. So I'd be sad about that, but I think we could do something better with that money and with that sort of influence, I guess, over a bigger community. So yeah, I think I would sell it. All right, so the next quite a few questions comes from Clay. Clay, 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 I don't know, Clay, we'll just say Clay. Clay, Clay. I'll sure. say Clay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with that. Uh, what was the decision process like making this project your full-time gig? Well, um, I think when I decided that I was just going to work on this game and only this game, well, that's, that never really happened because I still went off and did side projects mm -hmm. a couple of times. I made a Twitch game once, I made 
uh, a game jam. I did a bunch of game jams. I did a um, a shoplifting simulator game. Mm -hmm. I well, that one. you didn't shoplift; you caught shoplifters, which was weird. Um, but I did a bunch of little things like that, so I would, I don't know, but it was still full-time Swords of Magic because I was been full-time even though I took breaks. I would say it was probably when he got, when it started getting attention on, on Twitch. It was kind of like, well, I guess if people like this game and people are, are here tuning in like actively and uh, continuously to watch this game, then I should keep making it. And so I did. Okay. Uh, what are some of the choices you've made? Marketing Sword and Magic, what have you learned? That's a good question because I don't really know what I'm doing marketing. Um, luckily, I have uh, a couple people who do know what they're doing, like Tim Ruswick, who I can um, poke and, and bother until he tells me something, <laughs> gives me some answers. Um, he's been really cool about that too, he's helped me a lot. So um, I think a lot of it is just kind of like asking the community, like, hey, if I did this, would you think that's cool? You know, or would you, would that get your attention? Um, <clears throat> as far as marketing right now, really all I'm doing is YouTube and Twitch and yeah, like I'm not really going out of my way to do anything else. I tried um, Indie Boost, I think that's what it's called, where you sign up and then people can request keys to play the game and I got a couple of people through there who played the game, but I don't think that's done really anything substantially. Um, I met some cool people through it, which was great. Um, met some people who, who, who played the game on, on stream and now I've kept in touch with them and that's cool. But I haven't really done a whole lot of marketing yet, and I, when I plan to, I guess I can update this question or something, or when I, when I get to it, but yeah, I have some ideas. I have a lot of ideas, but I'm not going to share them yet because I feel like that's something I should keep a lid on until I just do it. Uh, what advice would you give a developer who has hit a wall in making their game? Hmm. Um, well, I think you have two options. You can either find the correct way around that wall, or you can break it down. Um, I think in Swords of Magic, I chose to break it down a lot of times. So if I couldn't figure out how to do an inventory system, I figured out how to do the simplest thing I could that was like the next best thing. So early on, it was a little four bar slot menu thing at the bottom, um, like a hot bar thing like Minecraft does, a four inventory or four slot inventory bar. Sorry, I can talk. Um, but yeah, that was that was me breaking through the wall that we're trying to climb over it. That wasn't me finding the way or, or the right way around it. I think now with Moz on the team, I'm able to find the way, right way around it. But you know, a lot of developers can't. A lot of a lot of people have a hard time stopping. Like they, they get stuck on something and they can't find a way around. So if you can't find the right way around, I'd say just break through it or climb over it somehow and make it work. Um, find a an interesting or creative solution to it. Uh, if, so if, you're, if your game relies on some sort of system that you can't make, find a way to make that game without that system, or use that creative limitation to, or that limitation to, to drive creativity and do something different. Uh, what's your outlook on the video game industry as a whole? Um, I don't know. I know everyone was, was really afraid of the whole indie apocalypse thing, and I think I don't even know if that happened or if we're past that, or I don't know. I haven't really kept up on that stuff, but. I would say it's cool seeing all these different places like Stadia and the Epic Game Store and and Steam, like where you have and and, and or, uh, itch.io and, and GOG and stuff. They're all different places we can now put our games, and that's huge. That's cool. We have so many different marketplaces now because it used to be kind of just one or two places, you know, either console or PC or Steam. And so I I don't know. I think it's just going to keep growing. I think people are realizing that video games are a big part of our culture now. And I think even adults are not adults, but um, like people who are not who are, who are aged out of video games, I guess, <laughs> who, who were never part of it. Um, I think they're starting to realize how important video games are. Um, uh, so I think I think it's just gonna keep growing and I hope that it just gets better and people more games get made and we can we can use games to tell good stories and uh, hopefully pass on experiences to our children that way is there an indie project you've got your eye on um, yeah actually um, one of my favorite ones right now is insignia by Adam Eunice he streams uh, that game's amazing uh, my wife and I actually played through the demo and we were kind of just taken away by it like it was really really good um, other than that there's 
Fates of Ort by Top Raj, who also streams. That one's gonna be awesome. That you you play a I didn't really explain what Insignia was. Insignia is a 2D um, platform RPG that is just fantastic. Um, I'm actually using I'm actually there's actually an Easter egg from the main character Armin in Swords of Magic that he gave me permission to do. So uh, keep your eye open for that. Good luck trying to find him. Uh, and then from Fates of Ort is made by a friend uh, Top Raj who also streams, and that is a game about. Uh, basically, you're a mage. It's an ISO game, um, and you. Uh, I'm gonna butcher this game description, but you basically use magic, uh, and it like kind of taps into your own life force. So you spend your own health basically to cast spells, and it looks fantastic. And there's tons of different magic and stuff, and it looks really fun to play. Uh, he won't let me play it though, so I don't know what it feels like because I guess he just doesn't like me. <laughs> so those are my two like top indie games right now, and I like. I'm talking like like underground indie games that aren't like blowing up. I think as far as like other indie games, I'd say is high does Hightail count as an indie game? I don't know if, I guess it does. It's not like AAA, but Hightail looks really good. I'm excited about that. Alright. Uh, what positive habits would you recommend for another solo dev to have? Um, I think the only positive habit I got into was streaming, honestly. I think the schedule. Yeah, streaming with a schedule was a big thing. If you just stream whenever you feel like it, you're just gonna eventually quit. I think. I mean, most people would, unless you're unless you already have good good habits about that kind of stuff. But for me, it was people relying on me to be there at stream. And when I when I'm late, I feel bad. And when I have to cancel a stream, I feel really bad. And sometimes I just start getting out of the groove, and I just don't feel like doing it. Excuse me. And I'll just end up being late, or 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 I'll, I end up start canceling, and I start realizing that I'm getting to that into that habit of being late and canceling and I had to reel myself back in and so I think uh, having people depend on you and having like like giving yourself a responsibility is a really good habit because it drives you to keep working on whatever you're working on and even when I switched games and started working on something else my community was understanding but you can tell from watching the viewer count that they are they're there for swords and magic and they want to see that game get done so when I started moving in other things those that viewer start, count started dropping uh, yeah, I think that keeps that keeps me accountable. So Definitely. I'd say streaming or, or some sort of schedule or a check-in system with a, with a buddy or another dev or something. Um, do you play video games with your significant other? I think that's me. I hope that's me. I think it's you. <laughs> do we play video games? Yes. Not as much as we should, or that we did. Yeah. We, we definitely... I just work too much, I think that's the problem. But there's definitely times where we stay up way too late yeah. playing games. And now Abby's getting to the age where she stays up with us and yeah. plays games. So it's weird because now we have to buy three copies of every game and that kind of sucks. But it, it's things we like, things we find, and just... I'd much rather spend $60 on three copies of an indie game yeah. than spend $60 on a movie. So, uh, yeah, I think we do play a lot of games together, and that's great. Um, we binge watch TV shows now a little more often, though, because it's just easier to sit down and do that. Um, it's hard to find games that we can all play together that Abby can play, and I can play and enjoy, and Jana can play and enjoy. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's why games like Swords of Magic are awesome, because there's a little bit of everything in it even if it's just a little bit you can dive into other aspects if you're not even if you don't love those points like so Janet can go exploring and, and oops sorry um and like fighting with me even though that's not her favorite part of the game and then I can take a break and go to town and go shopping and decorating my house with her so yeah uh is the paperwork slash web forms involved with launching a game on steam difficult it's kind of it's overwhelming at first. When I first started, I was I was googling all kinds of stuff. There's actually some pretty good tutorials in, in like the like the Steamworks forums, so you can check those out. Um, that's it's not as hard as you think it is, and once you get into it and like figure out how it works, it's not that bad. It makes more it made a lot more sense once I was in like uploading like builds. Uh, before that, I was really overwhelmed and really stressed out by it, and I didn't want to do it. Um, but just dive in and get it done. It's it's worth it. It's really worth having a store page up because you can send people there and already get start getting those wish lists, and that's a really important part. So, also, if you guys haven't wished this the game, what are you doing? We have 13,000 subscribers now and only like 2,000 wish lists. So, some of you guys have forgot to push that button. So, please click push the link. The button. Go push the button. Go wish this the game. Prove that you actually want to play it. 
Uh, what's a mistake you regret in Swords of Magic, and what have you learned from it? Hmm. Well, I already talked about how the game was way too big. Uh, when I first started, I was like, I'll just make this little open world RPG. And then pretty soon it was like, oh, I'll add crafting. Oh, I'll add this, I'll add this. Um, I think one part is not, not na one, one mistake was not nailing down like a design doc or a design for the game. Ne not necessarily a design document, but some sort of design for the game. So I had a, a scope, uh, some scope in mind. That was a big problem. But that aside, that also might have helped drive the game into what it is today. So. Maybe that wasn't a mistake. Maybe it was a, a blessing in disguise. A happy or mistake. A happy accident, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, so yeah, I'd say probably just the scope of the game was a big mistake and maybe some of the design choices early on that I didn't think through, but it worked out. The last question from Clay. Do you prefer sweet or savory foods? I prefer all those are all from Clay. Yeah, all every single one. That, <laughs> I think he has the most ones, he or she. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. I like all kinds of foods. Um, sweet or savory? Sweet or savory, I don't know. I would say savory for you. I think personally would pick that for you. Yeah, probably savory. Because you're more of a flavor. I like the sweet. Yeah. Sure. You, you, you like sweet, but... Sure. Okay. Savory. I don't know. I'm, I'm just guessing. I like savory and then sweet. <laughs> okay. Back to back. Um, chopped hill? Sure. I always read that as Chipotle. <laughs> Every single time I see that, their name, I always, I always read Chipotle and go, that's not it. I can, Sorry. I can see that. Okay. Uh, first question is release date. Question mark. Um, yeah, so we don't have a, a, a nailed down release date yet, but I'm thinking we might get early access in March. <laughs> I don't know yet. Uh, we don't know. It's, it's hard to say. It's really hard to say because now that Maz is on the team, I don't know how fast we're even moving. Once we get everything like in order, right now we're still trying to get like a groove, and we're trying to like like get a plan in place. So once we are kind of set back up, we have the project and the get set up. Get's not even set up yet. So once we have that set up and we're like on the same page and like working together. Um, I think we're gonna get like a schedule down a little bit and figure out what we're doing. So, but I'm hoping March. That's my goal is like early March. So, yeah. we'll see. Um, the second question from Chopped Hill. I really hope that's how you say all these names. I'm sorry, guys. Will there be a mini map or maps in general? Yeah, there's new maps in the game. So, originally it was going to be a map per zone when those zones were kind of blocked out like square pieces, which was a terrible idea. So, but now that that's not happening, we might have one big world map that shows like the whole world and I'm kind of hoping we can do like a zoomed in version of that that we can stitch together um, sort of like World of Warcraft does uh, but there won't be like zones like World of Warcraft it'll just be kind of one open world map so I'm not sure how it'll do or how it'll work maybe it'll just be one world map that you can zoom in and then see more details that just appear when you zoom in uh, we'll see we got five questions left okay from five room people we can do this okay uh, this one's from Ajet do you prioritize release dates or staying true to your vision? Uh, I think we've proven that staying true to the vision is more important because yeah. the last couple of times uh, we had something planned, it got pushed back because it just wasn't quite there yet. So um, I think release date. I think the the only release date we're gonna we're gonna really crunch and push for is gonna be early access when we actually finally release the game. The finished release game. That who cares when that date is? As long as it's not with as long as it's within like a year of early access, I don't care. Um, but yeah, I think I think the release date or the early access release date is the only one that's going to be super important because we want to make sure, um, like once we've advertised for that, it's got to go out that time. So once I locked on that date, that's when it has to go out. Everything else before that, if we miss a date, who cares as long as it's, it's done right. But yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to so butcher this. Orgle Borgle? Borg, borg, borgler? <laughs> yep, that's perfect. You, you got it. <laughs> Orgle Borgler? I'm so sorry. Um, will there be farming? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm trying. Yeah, there will be farming. <laughs> yes, um, it'll be very simplified. It's we're not making Stardew Valley or Harvest Moon here. It's going to be pretty basic. I think you'll probably be able to buy seeds in town or find them somehow. Uh, you'll probably be able to plant them in, in the uh, 
uh, in like a plot somewhere that you can buy or rent or something or just find, I don't know. Uh, and then probably water them maybe, who knows? I don't even know if that'll be in. Kind of depends on how deep the, the this uh, mod wants to make the system. I'm kind of just leaving it up to him. I know farming needs to be in so you can get raw ingredients for cooking um, without having to go gather them up or buy them from like a market or something in town. So there will be some sort of farming. It probably will be pretty basic though. Okay. Uh, next one is from Robert Magic. That's an easy one. How do you like Affinity Designer, and are you glad you switched from Inkscape? Yeah, so I've been using Inkscape for the last two years for the game. Um, I actually used it before that for 2D art for games. Uh, and I've always liked it because it was very simple and easy to, to, to dive in and learn. Um, I've been, I was recommended actually Affinity Photo to replace Photoshop a while back, and I saw that a designer. And lately I was like getting, I'm, I've just been fed up with uh, Inkscape because the way shadows work in Inkscape are really annoying and you have to like it's annoying. Anyway, I'm glad I switched. It was only fifty dollars at the time. It's now it's on sale for thirty-five, like Is a week after. Now? I don't know, probably. It was, Black Friday, it so. was on sale for thirty-five a couple a couple days ago at least. Um, hopefully, it still is. Um, probably by the time you see this, it won't be. But um, anyway. Yeah, I think it was well worth the money. It's $50 one time and you get to use it forever. Um, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, though I'm open to it. Um, because I think that it's a great program. Uh, I really like it a lot. It was a good choice. There's still a few things that are kind of like finicky about it that I'm like, ah, I wish this worked a little more like Inkscape. Um, but overall, it's way better. I can do a much less destructive workflow now so I don't ruin things and then find out later on like, oh, I needed to change that and now I have to remake it. So yeah, I like it a lot. I think it's well worth the, the money. All right, D. Drosler. We did. It. We did. My bad. Okay. I messed that up. But this is a good question. Does pineapple go on pizza? Yeah. Pineapple yes. and pepperoni go on pizza together. Not pepperoni. It's sweet and spicy. It's the only way to have pizza. <laughs> sweet and savory. Uh, last question then is from Mimic. Mimic ring. But what are your opinions on developer commentary and are you open to doing one for Swords and Magic? Oh yeah, so we already talked about this. We already covered that. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably do some of that. Um, yeah. That is a, all the questions. Most That's all of them? Magic somewhere. Yeah, so we do have some for Janna now. I don't know if you want to trade spots or how you want we to do can, this. We can trade spots. Sure, uh, except I don't know them. I don't have one written down, so we'll have to get that. So jump cut. Okay, you ready? I don't know. I like being the interviewer better than the interviewee. This is more fun. Yeah, I like that chair better. Well, I like the chair better. It's a chair better. <laughs> but being in that spot better. Okay. All right. First question is from Nias. Uh, the question is, what were you thinking when Kindred first started out? Um, well, there was so much going on at that time. Um, so finishing school, Abby was turning a year. You're just getting started. And I don't know, it, it was like, okay, here's another project. Here's another thing to, to do, uh, okay. And I mean, I think, I feel like I've supported you through every project you've ever made unless you come up with some stupid thing to do and I tell you no and then you listen to me because I'm smart sometimes. Sometimes. Um, but no, I, I think, I mean, I, I love the idea and how he pitched it to me, which he's really good at pitching ideas, so. Uh, I think how he pitched to me, I, I felt like it was going to be a good thing. Um, and there were some, some stepping stones in there, but I, I feel like I'm always supportive, so at least I'm who I am. Right. Next questions, next two are, by, are from Arrow. Uh, one is, what did you think of Kindred when you first met him? Um... <laughs> he was that really shy, mysterious guy that I really wanted to get to know that was always scared to talk to me, <laughs> I felt. And then I just felt like this, this geeky little kid. <laughs> I was 15. Yeah, it was a long so time ago. It was a long time ago, and I, I just felt like I was this geeky little girl that had this little crush mm -hmm. on this, this boy that not to you, my husband. So it worked out for me in the end, at least. It worked out. Yeah. Next question is: What are some of your hobbies and interests? Well, right now it's just work, which I don't want that to be an interest or a hobby. 
but so it, it probably is. isn't it? Um, but I actually love to read. I have, I don't even know how many books. We actually have a library where I have a ton of bookcases um, with a lot of, lot of books and my uh, couch in there and everything. So he has one shelf. Yeah, we don't live in a mansion, by the way. It's we just don't. A, it's just it's a just spare like, bedroom. It's just a spare bedroom. We the library because it's full of books. Yeah, it's just it just has books and a futon in it, so it doubles as a guest bedroom. But um, Abby has three shelves, but the rest is mine. So I love to read. Um, I currently have like a stack of thirteen books to read, and if it goes below like ten, I I have to buy more. <laughs> so I'm a little addicted to that. Um, other hobbies. I mean, I'm just been working so much; it's been crazy, but. I do love photography. Um, I haven't done it as much as I used to. I used to do it, uh, do like wedding photography and um, infants and all kinds of stuff. But it's more of a, a pastime right now than a, a current thing. Okay. Next one is from Zaria, and it's does Kindred inspire you to try to create games of your own? No. <laughs> So, wish. so he has tried forever to get me to help develop, games. develop, build, draw, whatever, and that's just not something I'm interested in. Like I'd rather just play the game. She took a programming class in college and I did, hated it, but she did really well. No, I hated it. Yeah, because you're so math oriented, it's very logical. Yeah, really I mean, good at it I can it. understand it, but I. Oh. I just, I hate it. I don't know. Um, but no, I, I'm not, I don't know. I like playing if, it. If I you like... guys want to see me and Mrs. Kindred do a game jam together, you should leave a comment below and we'll see if we can convince her to do something for a game jam. Either the art or at least design. The art? Oh no, please don't make me do the art. I, Abby is a better artist than me. Like, I don't draw. We like, should do the whole family game jam. That'd be my... so cool. <laughs> Abby so can do fun. the art. She's actually a really good artist. And she is. She is. She really, really is. And she will follow tutorials like perfectly. You can be the project lead. You're good at that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. All right. You can be the community manager <laughs> for the game team. I'm always the manager. All right. Next question. Um, what's Kindred's best feature? Actually, I think the question was aspect, but I think an asset or feature. I'm not sure. Like physically, that's mentally. That's what you decide, I suppose, because I'm not so, sure. So I'll answer mentally because that seems more appropriate. <laughs> um, I think it's gonna be your humor. Oh. Um, because sometimes you have those really dumb dad jokes. <laughs> Um, sometimes you have those jokes where I just shake my head, and sometimes you have these jokes where I don't get them for a couple minutes, and then I laugh hysterically. That's true. And then sometimes there's those jokes that I just laugh at. Just me. No one else. No one else thinks they're funny. And I, and I know that only she will laugh at them. And that's why he says them. Uh, but... Only her. I think I love your humor the most. <laughs> I mean, your intelligence is like right below that because you're really good at explaining things and making them able for other people to understand. Because I'm good at metaphors. You're good at metaphors and every I don't sure. but I think oh, we'll say here we'll leave it at that. Okay. Well thanks. You're welcome. Alright the next question is from Ma Master Ninjason or Master Ninja Son. Uh, what's Kindred's deepest, darkest secret? Um well we'll go with uh he's scared of whales. <laughs> um he does not like whales. He won't play video games with whales. Fake whales. He, he doesn't do good with that kind of stuff. So if there's a video game, he'll pass it over to me and be like, do you want to do this? <laughs> yeah, at least you can bring up any of Uh, So, yeah, let's talk about that. Anyway. <laughs> All yeah. right. Thanks. Uh, Wendy asks, what's the best way to eat potatoes? Oh, potatoes. The love of my life. Um, this is like that question, like, like what feature would you put in the game if you could do anything? It's like on the same level. <laughs> um, I love potatoes, like, every way. But I think the best way is the way I grew up with. That is just the classic. Um, is a baked potato turned into mashed potatoes with butter and cheese. I, I think 
I think that's that's my my basic go-to homey meal. Um, You're so vanilla. I am so vanilla. But I've upgraded to KitchenAid potatoes, so they're smooth and creamy. They're pretty good. They're really good. Um, potatoes are a essential in this household. You cannot live without. I cannot live without potatoes, and Abby likes them a lot too. So. All right, last question is from Dark, and it's, what's your favorite pastime together with Kindred? Um, I mean... That's a good question. We, yeah, we have a lot of different things. Like, we've, like we I said go. before, we've we've done video games all night. Uh, I remember when Abby was born, she, all she did was sleep and eat and poop, so... That's what babies do, um, turns out. But... We were really surprised, but that's all babies do. Yeah. But I had one of the, um boppies and we'd be on our computers and I'd have the boppy right here and she'd just be laying on, on in front of me and then we'd just be playing Minecraft <laughs> for... We played a lot of Minecraft on her maternity leave. I, I don't know, 20 hours a day and then get some sleep and um, I, there's that. But before <laughs> Abby, um, we actually went out to clubs a lot. Mm -hmm. um, we went out dancing and... Yes, I can dance. I can dance. Um, very well, but I can do it. I was always the DD, so I... Uh, I can also drink. <laughs> <laughs> you can also drink. Um, but yeah, we went out dancing a lot. Um, we rock we just... Climbing. Oh yeah, we did we did rock climbing. Um, we kind of stopped that when I got pregnant, because... It's can't. difficult to climb when you're pregnant. Yeah, you're pregnant. But, yeah. Um, but we did do a lot of rock climbing for a couple years. We had a good group of family and close friends that we went to the gym with and... Had some fun there. Indoor and rock climbing. In in, yeah, we did. We, actually, we did go Arizona, outside once. And you, you get heat stroke if you go climbing outside in Arizona. Yeah. So. Yeah. But um, we did a lot of that, and I don't know. We're kind of really indoorsy people. Um, That's the craziest thing we've ever done. It was like. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I hate bugs. I hate grass. <laughs> I hate. I, I don't like outdoors. Um, so, <laughs> we do a lot of indoor things. Um, we've done a few, like we did went to a cooking class once and we like cooking together. Yeah, we love cooking together actually. We like to do creative things, although I'm a super picky eater, so So when she says creative she means like adding cheese to something. No that you don't normally put No. <laughs> um I mean like make two separate things, one for me, one for you. No. Um but I don't know. We have a lot of different things that we've done, we've tried, we've um, changed around and we're just super indoorsy so now it's really playing some games together and binge watching movies or TV shows or whatever and cool. That's all the questions for you. Awesome. That was easy. Hey. See? You had a lot more. I had to read to you. <laughs> Good. You're the face. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Yes, um, thank you. This was fun. I think I might have to start doing more of this on camera, I guess, for the for the uh, devlogs and stuff. For the YouTube scene. Yep. Um, anyway, don't forget to wish the wish this game on Steam. Um, thanks to all the Patreon supporters. Uh, we just oh we just officially hit the first so um everyone who was in the like top like higher tiers of patreon are gonna get the rewards now which includes designing their own npc for the game we have some really cool ideas already um also naming npcs i don't think there was any just in the naming one though so everyone who designs their npcs also gets named though obviously um so yeah if you guys want to if you're interested in doing that for next month's tier um don't forget to go sign up on patreon um what else uh join the discord if you want to create an outfit for the game mm -hmm. and don't forget to watch the other devlogs and i never say this but like and subscribe because that's what you're supposed to do on youtube i guess so, oh abby says that perfectly too bad she's not here right now yeah. or we could ask her to tell you that but anyway uh thanks again guys um and i'll see you next time bye, bye. So, Abby, how do you feel about your dad making swords and magic and stuff? Pretty good. What is your favorite video game? I have like two. They're both on my computer.
Actually, no, I have three. Mm -hmm. They're all on my computer. So first one's Starbound, and then Minecraft, and then probably Roblox. What is your favorite food? Well, I do like lettuce. What? I do. That's not your favorite food. Well, I, I just like it. Okay, well that's good. And probably my favorite food. I have two different kinds, okay. and one of it, them is my mom's favorite food. So, really? So it's one. The one of them is mashed potatoes, and the other one is macaroni and cheese. Yeah, I knew you were gonna say macaroni and cheese, but I'm glad you added mashed potatoes because I love those. Do you make video games? Well, no, but I do have um RPG Maker. Yeah? You yeah. like to play in there? Yeah. What do you want to be but when you grow up? Oh, I go ahead. don't really um, test RPG Maker because like, when, I, when I try testing it, then it's usually really loud. Oh. But... <laughs> okay. What do you want to be when you grow up? This is a good question. Probably a gymnastics teacher. Yeah? Yeah. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.